Hi there, my name is Alexander. I'm the technical trainer from Deep Tracker, and I put together this video montage so I can show you uh, the DTG3 in terms of its control systems and especially highlight the new vertically mounted precision thruster. Now, this is our smallest ROV, um, the whole system, ROV, tether, and controller, and any add ons you have fit into a single wheeled Pelican case. Um, it's got an eight hour battery life and a 300 meter depth rating. Uh, you can pick it up and carry it with uh, one or two fingers. Uh, it's, it's really an amazing system uh, for its size with a 4K camera and super bright lights. Uh, now, in terms of its operation, the way we set up these devices, we ballast them to be neutrally buoyant. So you can add and remove uh, weights uh, so that when you take your hands off the controls, it sits as this unit is here uh, without moving in the water. When we want to move, we can use the two main thrusters on either side of the robot. If I push forward on a joystick, it moves forward. If I pull backwards on that joystick, it moves backwards. And when I push left and right, we get alternate thrust and the robot turns on a dime. Now, the reason the robot turns so precisely, and you can see that those sort of like sudden moves, it suddenly stops. Um, it's very, very easy to control because it's got a, uh, an accelerometer, a gyroscope, and a compass built into that sensor pod and it recognizes rotational velocity and fights any rotational velocity, uh, which is not a direct result of any control inputs. So the robot is quite easy to maneuver, uh, especially in a two-dimensional plane. When And, and uh, you know, caveat, you have to ballast your, your robot properly. But once you have, it's really easy to use. Now it gets a little bit trickier when you start thinking about moving vertically through the water column. I've got another joystick when I push forward or pull backwards, it pitches forward or pitches backward and it pitches relative to the amount of displacement of that joystick. Um, so you have to think about it like a fixed wing aircraft. I pitch the aircraft and then apply thrust to move it through uh, the water column. In this case, watercraft, I guess, would be the appropriate, appropriate term. Uh, so it moves very quickly up and down. You can get to depth fast. Uh, it, it's very efficient in terms of your time because of its ability to sort of point its strongest thrusters in one direction and then move. And when you take your hands off those thrusters, it sits stationary. Now, we also have a depth hold mode. So this is uh, valuable when you're not perfectly ballasted or if you've got turbulent water that's pushing the robot up and down uh, or if you want to move slowly uh, in a vertical direction so that you get a nice, um, a nice vertical inspection of structure underwater. So the robot will sit within about a tenth of a meter, constantly using those thrusters to hold itself uh, at that depth. But I've now given up smooth yaw control. Because my thrusters uh, are pointed relatively upwards, you can see the robot has to pitch down a little bit to be able to yaw. Now you can still put those control inputs in uh, and it will pitch and, and uh, yaw for you. Uh, and you can move forward and backwards. It's going to get rid of the pitch, it's going to move forwards, and then it's going to pitch back up as soon as you take your fingers off the controls. Um, but this creates a little bit of jerkiness in, in, the, in the camera view. I can fit into small spaces, I can move really quickly. Um, when I do a, uh, a, an inspection, especially when, when a skilled operator uh, is doing an inspection, we might not even use the depth hold mode because we're just constantly pitching and thrusting and, and manipulating the camera. So you're moving three joysticks all at once. Um, it's easy to do inspections of things that are flat. So uh, right now you can basically make the robot uh, so that it's in a horizontal orientation, but the camera, you can see where those lights are pointed. Uh, the camera is pointing straight up and then I can just drive around underneath the dock and I can inspect the bottom of the dock or the hull. But if I want to move vertically through the water column, and I want to do it without pushing three joysticks at once, um, I use the depth hold mode. With the new vertical thruster, the depth hold system is so much simpler. Uh, essentially, I'm doing the same thing. I hit the depth hold button, and I push up to go, uh, sorry, I guess I push forward to go down, I pull back to go up. Um, but in this case, the robot stays level. And this allows me to have very tight yaw control as well as to be able to move in and out uh, relative to, to whatever object it is that I'm inspecting. So uh, you can do this with a, a base level unit, but you can do this far more precisely uh, with the precision thruster, this vertically mounted precision thruster. So it's really ingenious to me. Um, 
essentially you've got this one thruster on the back, uh, and in, in this case the robot's about to descend, so that thruster is going to push up. Well, the robot would spin around in a circle, except that it uses the same counterweights from the pitching mechanism uh, to directly counteract the torque of uh, that thruster. And so what you get is a smooth vertical motion rather than rotational motion. Uh, and here you can see, uh, while you're doing all of this, you can still manipulate the camera. You can turn the camera to look anywhere within a 270 degree range. Uh, so you've got an incredible amount of precision in the position of your robot and in the position of the camera to see exactly what you need to see. Um, this, to me, is a, a, a big improvement over the previous uh, sort of base level system, but both are incredibly effective. and. Uh, and for me, I came to this company as a, as a licensed Canadian drone pilot, and uh, I find the DTG-3 uh, a joy to pilot. Um, it's, it's both fun, it's intuitive, and, uh, and it's very effective. I've got some more clips here. I'm <laughs> running out of things to say. Uh, I've got some more clips here, so I'll just, I'll just let it run for the next 30 seconds or so, uh, it's just so you can get a, a feel for its, for its movement. I think that's about it. So uh, thanks so much for watching and uh, I hope this was informative.